how's it going? Alright, so um, this time we're going to have a look at the uh, the NES 2 or Mini or Junior, um, this redesigned model either way. Now this is a US model as opposed to the uh, uh, the AV Famicom um, and as a lot of you guys will be aware with these um, they don't have any AV ports, they're um, RF only. Well actually I believe there are a couple of AV models of these but very very hard to find so these are slightly more common and um, you know I noticed that there's a lot of mixed opinions on these some people don't like the design some people are worried about the uh, the bars and the um, and the display so um, for me I have uh, the the original toaster style mezes um, and I've got a US model and in particular um, I do have a bit of trouble with that from time to time I uh, you know you put the cartridge in you get the flashing screen um, and what I did with that is I actually changed the um, the 72 pin connector. I put a brand new one in, um, and I actually found I still had a bit of trouble with it after that. And of course, you know, I've cleaned cartridges and everything, and I just thought, well, I don't get a lot of time to play games, so when I do, um, I want to know that they're going to work. And I'd read that these are, and I can see um, straight away that these are a lot more reliable. So. Whether you like them or not, like I say, they're a bit of a choice, but I thought, well, if you do have one of these, uh, maybe you'd like to get some AV output out of it. Now, um, I had a bit of a look on the net, um, some information on these, and I found a few mods on how to do it. Um, I thought, basically, I'd follow one and um, share with you how it all goes, so if you want to follow along and do one yourself, um, yeah, so I guess we'll uh, crack into it. Now, first thing to do is... Um, before you start work on any of these Nintendos or any machine, with it unplugged, it's always a good idea just to switch it on, just to make sure you're going to discharge any power or anything that's in it. Okay, so um, parts you're going to need are some 120 ohm resistors, some 330 ohm resistors, um, some 220 microfarad capacitors. I've got um, just 10 volt ones here because they're a little bit smaller, and you know there's not heaps of room in these machines. But hey, if you're running with um, 35 volt or 16 volt cap should be fine as long as it's over sort of 6 volt they'll be okay. Um, we've also got some 560 picofarad capacitors, some little wee ones, and also um, you're going to need a transistor as well. With, now this transistor is a 2N3906 NPN transistor. Um, now if you've gone and got some transistors for like the Sega Genesis um, or the Sega Master System, you know, doing the S-Video mods and that, you've got some transistors left over. Um, these ones, unfortunately, they are different, um, so you will need to make sure that you go and get one of these. So they're basically wide different. Um, you're also going to need, you know, a little bit of Vero board, um, 6x7 um, is pretty much what you're going to need. And uh, yeah, so we'll uh, get into it. Alright, so looking at the top of our board, um, what we need to do first is we're going to get our transistor, transistor in. So, um, basically if you count two up, and then one in, and then feed the three legs in. So hopefully you can see that there. There we go, that's probably the best angle. So, go up two from the bottom, one across, and then slide that in. Just like that. Okay, orientation of this and capacitor and everything else is going to be kind of important. So we'll have that there and we'll flip it over and we'll just add some solder to that. Okay, and then what we can do once we've got it soldered on is there's always going to be a little bit of excess on the legs, so pretty much we're just going to cut that off. Okay, so uh, next up we're going to add our little uh, 560 picofarad capacitor, and it's pretty much going to go just above the last leg of the uh, transistor there. So it's pretty much count up four and then um, poke it in. See if I can't get a bit of an angle there. Okay, so we'll just pop that down there so it's going to sit just behind it. And there's with 
These pick a ferret capacitors, there's no positive or negative, so you don't need to worry about getting it the right way around, um, pretty much. There's no worries, so once you've got it pulled through, just give the legs a little bit of a bend out. And uh, we'll just get some solder applied to that. Okay, so next to the device we're going to add is one of our resistors. Uh, this is the 330 um, ohm resistor. And pretty much going over to the far side of the board here, what we're going to do is you go up one and put one leg in, and then you skip one and put it in the next one. So, what I do, it's just a little bit awkward. If you can see there how we're skipping one over. Okay, and again, we just flip it over, give the legs a little bit of a bend out. We'll just get that quickly soldered up. Okay, so next up we're going to do our 120 ohm resistor. And basically this is going to go on the very edge here. And it's going to run over and join up in between the one that we missed on the 330. So if you can see there how it's going to run up in between the um, 330 there and over onto the very edge. Because these boards are quite small, um, it doesn't hurt if you can try and keep a finger on them because they do want to wander around when you solder into them. <laughs> Right, so the last component we need to um, add in, um, apart from the wire, is our um, 220 microfarad capacitor. So, if we're um, looking at this, basically look at the top of the board, and you want to count down three, and then come over one, and that's where we want our negative lead to go. And don't forget, with the capacitors, the um, with these type anyway, the negative lead has a stripe down it. Okay, so count down three, one, two, three, come over one, and that's where we want our negative lead to go. As you can see, it's going to go in there, and the positive leg goes directly beside it, which ends up being in line with the uh, third leg of our transistor. So we'll just pop that in there, like that. Flip it over, give it a bend out. Now with this capacitor, it is important that you put it the right way around. So definitely do it as I've shown. And like I say, I'll try and get a bit of a guide, uh, bit of a, a guide up on the website because I understand that watching these, watching this in a video might be a little bit difficult to follow. So it would be good to have a, maybe a still picture as a reference. So I'll definitely get onto that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to add in some wiring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a red wire. And this is going to go on the very edge of the top of the board. And you can see it's going to basically go down and connect up with our um, 330 ohm resistor. Okay? So this red wire is going to carry our 5 volts. Okay, so I've got our red wire going on the edge there. And then what we need to do is come over in line with the center of our. Um, our transistor here and we need to run our feed for our input so I'm going to use a white wire for our input so it's one two three four across and we're going to plug that in there so this is our video in from our video encoder okay so fourth one across, we've got our white wire, that's our input, and then right next to it, so in line with the um, one side of our little capacitor, and also a leg of our 
transistor. We're going to put a black wire in. This is going to be our ground feed. Okay, so it's going to go right next to it. And once, and if you're doing this, um, you'll find that once you start getting wiring attached to a board this size, it tends to get a little bit fiddly because it tends to want to skate around. So. My apologies if uh, this isn't filming too well. Okay. And last wire, this is going to be our output. So this is going to go off to our, us, um, our RCA jack. Um, it's going to go on the very edge of the board. And I'm going to use a blue wire for that. So again, this is our output. Okay, so feel free to skate along with a multimeter and just make sure that None of your wires are shorting out, but there we go, that's now fully complete. Um, so we've got our 5 volt in, our input, our ground, and our output all attached, and our little circuits built. So what we can do is wrap this up in insulation tape or hot glue it somewhere safe or whatever you like. And uh, yeah, next up we need to uh, start making our connections to a console. Okay, so we're looking at the bottom of our motherboard here, and first wire we're going to attach is our, um, our video input. So this is the white wire, okay? Now, uh, with the point of, uh, well, you can see this is one side of the shielding here, so hopefully when you flip your board over, you better identify it. Um, basically, just down here, this is a power switch, and what we're interested in is this point here, which goes up to this point, okay? And um, what we're going to do is we're going to solder our white wire just onto this point. So first up is we'll add a little bit of solder just to loosen it up. And then basically we're going to just very carefully solder our white wire onto it. Just like that. So that's our video input. Okay, so looking at the, this is the back of the board, so we've got our RF unit, it's just basically around here, to give you a bit of a point of reference. What we're going to do now is we're going to attach our ground. So this area here basically is ground, so we're going to just attach to this one here. Some solder onto it. And then we're just going to come in and attach our black wire. Okay, so that's our ground attached. And while we're here, we'll get our 5 volts attached. And if you look, there's a trace that runs basically just past where the ground is. And you can see this little blank area there. The first pin is where that it comes into contact with, is where we're going to get our 5 volts from. So, add a little bit of solder. And then just solder it on like that. Okay, so that's our 5 volts and ground done. And the only wire left going to our little circuit board is our, um, for our video output, that's going to get hooked up to a socket. So pretty much we can, uh, we can move on from there. Okay, so now we've pretty much got our main hookups done for our board. Um, what we are going to do as well is we're also going to need to get audio out of this. So, I don't want to be too confusing here, but I don't have many colour choices. So, what I'm going to do is for our audio, I'm going to use another white wire. And I'm just, um, the audio in these NESs is um, just mono. There are stereo sound mods out there for those who are interested. But for me personally, the games are in mono, so I'm not really worried. I'm just going to um, hook up a mono feed from this. But um, what we need to do is just where we've attached our 5 volts, basically you'll see two pins just beside it. So, not the pin directly next to it, but the pin after, that's where our audio is. So we'll just add a bit of solder to that. And then we're just going to tap another white wire on. Just like that. Okay, so you'll have this stray white wire coming out that's not attached to anything. Just remember that, that in this case it's, uh, it's for our audio. But hey, I mean if you've got a different colour, it would be a good idea to use it, just so you don't get confused. Alright, well we're pretty much finished on the underside of the board, so um, we can probably pop it back in the uh, casing now, and um, yeah, almost done. Okay, so just before you um, get it all mounted back into the housing, um, as I've just remembered I need to do, is we've got our ground wire in, 
you'll see that there's a few extra pins and basically we need to solder on one more ground wire into that and that's just so we've got something to feed out to our, uh, our sockets because they're going to need a ground as well. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a second ground wire coming out of there now just to go out to our sockets. So now we can wrap this up in tape or secure it however you want. We'll get our board fitted back in and we're away. Okay, so I've just uh, got a little gap here that I've poked the wiring out of just up near the um, cartridge connector. Of course, make sure that, um, that you don't pinch any of the wires when you're putting this back down. I'm just going to sit all our shielding and everything back in place and get that quickly screwed down. Okay, so that's our audio and video hooked up, and uh, yeah, now we get to give it a test. And um, of course, once we're um, confident that it all works, we'll come and apply some. I'll come back and ho apply some hot glue and just make sure it's all nice and safe and insulated. And yeah, uh, that'll be that. So right, we'll get this uh, hooked up to the TV and um, we'll give it a bit of a test. Okay, so I've just got my RCA's hooked up there. Got my copy of Castlevania in, and... And uh, pretty much impossible to play with one hand, of course. <laughs> but as you can see, we've got a nice clear picture out of it. Um, no obvious lines or anything anywhere. Got a sound going, so yeah, we're all working. Cool. Um, so yeah, guys, there you go. Um, like not everyone likes these machines, but um, if you do happen to have one of these, or if you you know you're trying to think of something that's a bit more reliable uh, to play your NES games on, and you don't want to go to a clone, you know these are they're not the cheapest thing around, but they're certainly an option. And with a little bit of a uh, little bit of modding, um, they end up just as good as the original toaster. But the added benefit of being that little bit more reliable. So um, yeah, perfect. So um. Yeah, as always guys, thanks very much for watching and uh, yeah, we'll see you again real soon.